Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon all of you. So setting kids up for success is really a way of thinking with all different types of things that you go about with them and that you carry with you. And it's something that you want to start practicing yourself. And it's something that it doesn't necessarily involve the same thing with each different area of raising a child. So, so it is a, it's really a way of thinking. And to illustrate it, I'm going to talk about it with like success in terms of performing a concrete physical task, because it's a very concrete example, but the lessons you can take from it, you can extrapolate to, 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 to many different things in parenting and, and to get the base and the foundation for, again, the proper way of thinking. So, so tying uh, a kid, tying their shoes. Now, if you look it up, a kid, uh, information will tell you that a kid uh, isn't able to tie their shoes until age five. And that's generally true. There are like a lot of the fine motor skills that involves to, for tying shoes, kids won't have until they're in age five. But at the same time, a five-year-old should be able to tie their shoes and can. And definitely a six-year-old. And if you have a six-year-old who you send to school in first grade and they can't tie their shoes, you're sending a kid to school who is likely that who's going to be a drag on the class right? to, to, to put it bluntly. It's you, you haven't set the kid up for a success at school because if they can't tie their shoes in there, the adult energy is going to have to be devoted to that kid where it could be used somewhere, somewhere else. And that can have a dragging effect on the class overall. And you might be able to send them uh, with with shoes that don't wear laces for a lot of the time but if they're going to gym class and this type of thing they should be wearing shoes with laces and some schools might even require it so anyway but tying shoes is just a concrete example and it's you know if you look up information about it it's going to tell you that kids can't tie their shoes until they're five now parents will take from that and think from that okay i'm not going to make them tie their shoes until they're five or even work on tying their shoes until they're five now that's where the thinking is very mistaken and, and the thinking isn't in terms of setting them up for success both in the short term and long term in life because you want them to be successful with it when they get to that age and there's social implications for it so when you think about setting kids up for success just talk about performing tasks right now and kids need to have tasks for to perform tasks of responsibility okay there's too many kids who too much of their life is just uh, just having fun, eating, and going to school. Kids need tasks and chore, chores to do uh, as part of learning responsibility. And yes, both both boys and girls. So you know, tying the shoes is one of the early ones that you can work on with them. Now, as an exercise, what I what, what something you can do is think through the process of tying your shoes. And write down every single step, every single physical step that is involved in doing it. And try to break down the physical steps in as small of increments as you possibly can. Because when you try to do that, that gets your mind closer to thinking about how kids experience things. And therefore, how you need to communicate things and, 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 and model things for kids to get them to be successful in tasks and to teach them. So just, just for example, if you ask an adult, uh, what are the first two steps in tying your shoes? What they will say is the first step is you cross the laces and the second step is you loop the string through, okay? Now, that's one way of communicating the first two steps. But for a kid, especially a little kid, that's not, that's, those aren't the first two steps. The first step for a kid is you take the lace and you put it in between this finger and that finger. And maybe it's a time where you teach the words index, index thing, finger and thumb, because you might have to teach some terminology in order to teach the tasks. But that's the first step. You put it in between your fingers. And then you pull it up so, so it's straight. That's the second step. Then the third step is you put the other st string in between your fingers. And the fourth step is you pull that up until it's straight, okay? That's four steps right there. Now, a kid who's younger than five, 
they can perform those steps. They can probably perform those steps as early as two. So as early as two, you can have them have a pair of shoes that they need to tie. And when it comes time to go out of the house, and you're going to put those shoes on. You can start prompting them, showing them and having them do those first two steps. Oh, can you put it in between your fingers? Can, can you can you pull it up? Good. You know, can you can you do it with the other one? Very good. And then you can take over. Now, now once once, the, you know, and just focus on those first few steps. And it won't be very hard. And do ha have them do just that first step for enough time until it gets to a point where it comes time to put the shoes and you're going to help them tie the shoes and they just start doing it almost automatically. Or they just need to be, or you just need to say, can you get it started? And they can do it very easily. Once they can do that step easily, then go into teaching the next step. So the next step is going to be, again, it's not just crossing, but it's crossing with one hand over the other one hand over the other and touching the index finger that's the next step so so just 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 putting it together like this okay can you that that's gonna be the next step you're gonna have them do once once they've got this habit then you can say good and you know at this point you can like hold their hand kind of while they do it to get them started with it but you start getting them doing it and, and showing it the right way and again this is a step that they can perform now the step after that is pinching the two laces together with your thumb. And this is where you start to get with the, the fine motor skills with it. This is where you start to get with it. But to this point, you can probably get them there at age two or three. Get them to the point where they can raise it up and put it together. Now, again, the, the looping, it's, it's more complicated. But you can show them with, but you can have them look at it really closely while you're doing it. You can describe what you're doing with your fingers to it as you do it, and that sets that up, sets them up mentally to when their fine motor skills do develop, uh, to have a clearer idea of what they need to do. You know, you, you can again also you can sometimes put their hand in your hand and sort of move their fingers along with yours and start to do it. You can do little things like that to start to set them up. Now, maybe the looping part is something that you're going to be doing with them up until they're at about age five. But once you do that step, once you, once you do this step for them, you can have them grab the two sides. And what's the next step? They can do this part. They, they, can, they can do that part. Age two, three, four, they can do that part. And then, you know, the first part of the looping is you lift it up like this. So when you break down the parts of tying the shoe, you're breaking it down into as small increments as possible. And when you break each step down, you're categorizing them in your own mind between ones that are simple and ones that are complex. And ones that involve the more mature mo fine motor skills and ones that don't. Speci the motor skills specifically with tying the shoes, but with any task, there's going to be ones that are, there's going to be steps that are simple and ones that are complex. So you're going to know in doing it along, you can prompt them to do the simple ones as you go along, and you're going to give more help with the complex ones. And in this way, like from age two, three, and four, you're, you're, you're building the skill up already, and you're building the confidence up already. So then when, when, when their physical capacity and their mental capacity has developed to the point where they can perform the whole task when they're at age five, they're set up better for success in doing it. Because, you know, what happens too long, now, another thing with this, too, you have to give yourself time in doing this. Because kids get, uh, they refuse about tying their shoes at age five, even when they're able to, because they're often because it's been done for them too much. Now, a, a key way this happens is when it comes time to go out of the house, you got to get everybody ready. And that takes time when you have kids. So, and parents just do this too often. It's simpler and more efficient time-wise for you to just do it for them. Because you want to get the shoes on and tied in 30 seconds and not three minutes. But you have to a lot that, but, but if, you know, because your mind is in a rush when you're moving around. But, but that two and a half minutes difference, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much time. And it's actually time that is worth the investment there for the independence that it's going to build in the kid later. So, you know, from when they're young, 
You want to spend more time having them do these simple tasks, even when they're two, three, four, even though it might, even though it will take the process longer or time the shoes, but the more they do it, the more it becomes habitual for them. So it all gets quicker. And then even when they have to do the more difficult parts, once they're five, you have to give yourself the few extra minutes it takes for them to do it and not feel rushed when you're moving out the door. Cause that, 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 that's totally a, um, you know, short term gain from the parent. You're gaining two minutes of time and doing it for them, but you pay for it in the long run because you don't build up independence in the kid. So try, just, just try it. Think the whole thing through. This is, this is a good teaching activity. And, and you know, again, the, the adult mind, it integrates things, it integrates ideas better and connects ideas better, especially abstract ones, much more quicker than younger brains. So for the adult, the natural thing to say is, you know, the first step is to cross it and loop it because your mind puts those things together very quickly. But for a young mind, there's, there's several different steps involved in, with, within those. So, so use this as an example to think about how you break those things down. And then when you get your mind in the habit of breaking things down like that, then you are beginning to condition yourself into the mental habits that you need to set kids up for success. Because you can start looking at that with all kinds of other tasks. So asking yourself, what are the incremental steps involved? What steps are simple? Which ones are complex? And that starts to, that starts to train your own mind to organize things that kids have to do in such a way that you can see where they need help and where they need independence and how to build it up incrementally.